today on MHK All Day, we take a look at the Multicultural Center future plans with its increased budget. Ever wondered where the money you pay for campus parking tickets goes? We'll tell you more and how enrollment could potentially affect ticket prices. Also, the dusty bookshelf in the Aggieville is reopening its doors after burning down two years ago. All of this and more coming up. This is MHK All Day. Good morning and welcome to this special edition of MHK All Day, live from the K-State Student Union. First up, here are a few stories making headlines in Manhattan and around Riley County in 90 seconds. On March 20th, the Manhattan City Council unanimously approved a motion to move forward on bids for the airport parking lot overhaul. The proposed $4.5 million project looks to bring over 100 new parking stalls, bringing the overall total to around 830. This would eventually lead to a new $5 daily parking fee, marking the first time that the parking in the Manhattan Regional Airport wasn't free. A Title IX lawsuit against K-State, which claims the university failed to investigate rapes at fraternities, will be advancing through the civil court. Five years ago, Sarah Weckhorst and Tessa Farmer filed Title IX lawsuits against Kansas State University, claiming the school failed to investigate their accusation of rape at fraternities. While fighting the Title IX lawsuits, K-State spent $350,000 in legal expenses. Last week, we learned that the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled against K-State's request to have this lawsuit thrown out. K-State is currently working through five Title IX lawsuits, including sexual ass assault on campus, the second most in the country. The lawsuit will proceed through the courts in the coming months. Kansas State's radio program is the longest running college radio station in the United States. This April, KSDB 91.9 will be celebrating its 70th anniversary. Along with the milestone, Kansas State Student Governing Association recently allowed KSDB to access $18,000 of funds previously set aside for the station. The funds will be used to purchase a new DJ automation system for 91.9. Expect the changes to be in place by early April. That's all we have for this week's News in 90. We are going to send it up to Bree for an update on enrollment this spring at K-State, and here is students' input about why the numbers continue to drop. Bree? Thanks, Bridget. Enrollment numbers are consistently dropping each year at K-State, and I'm here with student Bill Bernard to talk about why some might choose not to come to school here. But first, let's take a look into why administrators think this trend continues and what it means for campus. Blind for the sixth straight spring this semester. Caitlin Hammond, a first year student living in Moore Hall, says she doesn't see why enrollment continues to consecutively drop. I guess that doesn't really make sense to me. There's so many people here on campus and um, there's so uh, much to do, so many like good programs. Uh, I don't know why they would be dropping. Across campus, residence halls are closing floors and wings of buildings for renovation purposes. The associate director of resident life says this wouldn't be possible if enrollment was at capacity. Yeah, if you look historically back to about 2012 when enrollment was at its highest, we were over capacity by 600 spaces. We had students in hotels, we had students in apartments that we were renting, we had students doubled up in apartments in Jardine, and so uh, we built Weefald Hall in part because we needed more space. The Collegian reported President Richard Myers said the school must rely on increased tuition for campus operations to make up for decreased enrollment. Dr. Pat Bosco says K-State is aware of tuition costs as a factor and says the school is working to help students financially. I think cost is a factor and, and we've, we've, we've raised tuition and fees here. Uh, we've tried to be as reasonable as we possibly can. We've raised millions of dollars in scholarship and need-based aid to help students who simply can't afford to go to school here. College administrators say increased tuition is not the only reason for decreased students on campus. And what we hear overwhelmingly is that the demographics are changing. We have more uh, families that are struggling. We have more single parents raising children more first-generation families. Hammond says it's unfair that students won't get to experience college for any reason. I think everybody should be able to experience a good college experience, a good college like uh, program and stuff like K-State has. 
And it does suck that not everyone gets that because of tuition or whatever the cause. The numbers show K-State's enrollment has dropped over 600 students from last spring. I'm here with K-State student Bill Bernard. Thanks yes. for stopping to talk with me. Yes. So can you tell me a little bit about why you think K-State enrollment continues to drop? I can think of a multitude of reasons. I would think probably the biggest piece would probably be like the monetary value. Um, not everybody has the feasibility to come here straight after high school, so uh, many people may end up doing what uh, I did, where I had gone to a community college before coming here, saved some money, and then I came here. Thankfully, I was in the Air Force, so thank you, Uncle Sam, for paying the bill. But that's not always an option for everybody. So I think money is probably one of the biggest things that uh, affects people in choosing to go to school here or there. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for stopping to talk with us. Oh, yeah, no problem. It's I enjoyed it. Yes, thank you. Back to you, Bridget. Thanks, Bree. Enrollment numbers aren't just affecting educational departments at K-State. Parking Services has also felt the impact of this decline. The continual decline in enrollment at Kansas State University has started to strain parking services budget over the course of this year. With fewer students on campus, certain centers across the university have experienced major hits to their revenue, according to Jeff Morris, the Vice President of Communications and Marketing at K-State. Um, you know, parking services is a revenue center, and so they tend to be fairly self-sufficient, so the number of students affects the amount of revenue that they have. Um, and they're like a lot of the areas that are, that are service centers revenue generating to have to kind of make their own money. They don't receive central money from the university. Parking services has three main sources of income, those being parking permits, citations, and metered stalls. The biggest source coming from parking permits sold, which directly correlates with enrollment numbers. Jeff Barnes, the director of K-State Parking Services, says the decline in enrollment has not only affected the amount of revenue being generated, but also the amount of maintenance being done across campus. So we're, the biggest uh, effect it has is how much maintenance we're able to do on a yearly basis. The less, the less revenue we have from permit sales, the less we're able to do maintenance wise. And so that, that's the biggest effect. The weather conditions this past winter caused an even bigger strain on parking services with their already limited budget. Lots are falling behind. You have a bad winter like this one, we're starting to have all the potholes and stuff and that just deteriorate, deteriorates a lot even faster as we go. So that's what we're trying to alleviate with the, with the maintenance money, so. Since 2015, enrollment numbers have steadily dropped. Barnes is now being faced with the question of whether or not to increase prices or reduce the amount of money being invested into maintenance and infrastructure. Uh, we haven't we haven't raised prices yet. Something's got to give somewhere, and I, I think we're going to be looking at a rate increase probably July of 2020. Things like that. It's it's going to be out in the open. We're not hiding anything. We're um, or we're going to have to do less maintenance. While prices will remain the same for now, students shouldn't be surprised if rates increase in the coming years. Parking Services plans to resurface the B2 lot north of Haymaker and more residence halls this summer. Don't go anywhere because after the break, we have an update on the Multicultural Center's plans for renov renovations. We'll see you back after the break. Welcome back to MHK All Day. It was recently announced that the new campus multicultural center is scheduled to begin construction this summer. MHK All Day reporter Matthew Heinen has more. This year, K-State has gone to great length to provide a diverse environment for its students. Events such as KSU Unite have attempted to bring students together into one unified body. In keeping with this initiative, K-State will soon undertake another major project here at the Student Union. This small grass hill near the en east entrance of the Student Union will soon become the site at the new Multicultural Center. The three-story center will include meeting and performance practice spaces, student organization and group spaces, a kitchen, office space, a prayer and meditation room, and additional core support spaces and offices. The center has often been described as a solution to the problem to many multicultural student organizations not being able to find meeting or rehearsal spaces and making the union and campus as a whole more accessible. If the deadline for fundraising and donations is met, instruction is set to begin on July 15th. From the K-State Student Union, I'm Matthew Heinen with MHK All Day.
Thanks, Matthew. For more information on the Multicultural Center, you can visit their website. Stay tuned because we have more coming up after the break. Welcome back to MHK All Day. We're going to go back upstairs to hear from Brianne Smith about more from students. Thanks, Bridget. I'm here with K-State sophomore Sean, and we're going to talk a little bit about what it means that Hale Library is closed for students. So can you tell me a little bit about, you know, what benefits the union offers you as a student for studying? Mm -hmm. There's a lot more uh, flexibility, and I think, in the different spaces that it offers. Uh, like, we have the uh, set up booths where you can study and have kind of like a, a traditional table set up, but we also have different locations where um, you can sit on some uh, really comfortable couches and kind of relax into a study environment and it really works to kind of if you have like a meeting that you want to set up it allows for a little bit less of a strictly formal environment which can help a lot of meetings go a bit smoother. Absolutely. So what big difference have you seen since Hale's been closed maybe with your classes and where you guys meet compared to having to meet here? Uh, there has been a lot of uh, variance in what I've seen uh, before it was really easy to just say uh, meet in the library because uh, there was that space um, but now it's just kind of you have to be kind of more adaptable uh, thankfully we do have these spaces like the Union that are available but uh, it's it, it's a process of getting used to of being more flexible but I think it's a good experience for uh, professional environments where you do have to make those kind of concessions on a um, on a daily basis. Great. Well, thank you so much, Sean. We're going to send it back to Bridget. Thanks, Bree. Tomorrow, K-State will host a Relay for Life event at the Campus Rec Center. Reporter Sean O'Bray sat down with the event organizer to talk about the fundraiser. And uh, we have Coach Kleiman coming to speak, and we have like, a local doctor coming to speak, um, and all the proceeds from the event come go directly to the American Cancer Society. So that's kind of the whole point of the event is to raise funds for the American Cancer Society. And um, it'll be a lot of fun. We have on the spot improv coming, swinging spurs, um, audacity, cadence, a lot of K-State groups. If you're interested in Relay for Life, check out www.secure.acsevents.org. Baseball season is in full swing at K-State and conference play is in progress. Sports reporters Anna Christensen and Aaron Wintermo are back at Studio B with your sports update. Bridget, we're here with your MHK All Day Sports Report. K-State baseball is off to a bit of a slow start this season, still looking for that first conference win. It's still early in the season though, and there's a lot of conference ball still to play. Coach Pete Hughes hasn't even been in charge for a year yet. Still the sweep by Oklahoma State doesn't help. That's true, but luckily K-State has another chance at home with their second conference baseball series coming up. The Cats host Texas Tech this weekend with their first game tonight at 6. It's going to be a tough one for the Cats. They swept us last year pretty easily, scoring over 20 runs in two of the games. K-State certainly has their work cut out for them, but they've been putting in the work. I caught up with Coach Hughes and Chris Ceballos earlier this week to get their thoughts about the rest of the season. You know, we, we get better every day in these the work ethic in our program's outstanding and the attitude's even better and when you have those two things you can you can only get better um, but we know that we, we're going to see a good team and we know the margin for error is really small when it comes to this weekend and we need to play clean baseball you know i think as a team we're really growing um, we're really figuring out who we are i mean this past weekend even though we went on three i think it was really it showed us a lot of what we have and what we need to work on in other college sports, the NCAA College Tournament is really heating up. We've had some exciting third-round games already and have a couple more coming up tonight. I think my favorite part of the NCAA Tournament is filling out brackets and getting to see those teams you don't usually pay so much attention to. How's your bracket looking? Pretty good heading into the round of 16 with only two wrong selections. I put Yale instead of LSU in the East and Buffalo instead of Texas Tech in the West. We've got Virginia taking it all. How's yours doing? Well, mine isn't doing quite as well as yours, that's for sure. But I've definitely done better than in some other years. I also have Virginia making it to the final round, but put them down losing to Gonzaga. I think they're going all the way. I put Michigan State in the championship instead of your Gonzaga pick, but it sounds like we both had similar mindsets with Virginia going to the championship game after they were the first one seed ever to lose in the first round last year. 
That's true, and I didn't want to underestimate them this year. I think it's interesting that neither of us put Duke in those last four teams. I wasn't sure keeping them out was a good idea, but after their performance against UCF, I can see them getting knocked out in the next couple rounds. I actually have them losing to Virginia Tech tonight. You know, that is going to be a really good ACC matchup to watch. I actually have them getting knocked out by Michigan State in the next round, though. Speaking of teams being knocked out, I have to say I'm still upset about both K-State basketball teams going home so early. Yeah, I am too, especially after the men's run in the tournament last year. That was not up to my expectations for this season. That first round loss really hurt, especially for the seniors. Yeah, that's true. And did you know, at the tournament, MHK Day reporter Molly Hackett was able to catch up with the team and a couple of their moms in San Jose. Just having that physical presence to be there to let you know that I'm always in your corner, I'm always going to have your back, and I'm always going to be your number one fan. So that's, that's like the number one job for a mother is to be their child's number one fan. As a parent, I mean, you always want to sacrifice for your children and, and do the best for them. So getting to see them uh, do this and making the road trips, geez, it's a great it's a great opportunity for us to get to go and then watch him and the team. And oh, it's just been awesome. It's a great, I'm very grateful. A lot of people were heartbroken for the players after their NCAA run was cut short. But it can be easy to forget the families behind them. It's nice to hear the mom's perspective. You know, I agree. That was really sweet to hear from them. The Special Olympics World Games just wrapped up in the United Arab Emirates, and I caught up with one of Manhattan's local athletes who just returned home from the competition. I caught third in the 100. I caught a fourth in the 400, and then I caught seventh in the um, relay. So I got this trophy, and it says Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi 2019 the World Games um, on Special Olympics, little apple trained. And that wraps up sports for this week. MHK All Day is back again after the break, live at the Union. Welcome back to MHK All Day. I'm Zach Perez. Two years ago, Manhattan lost a staple of its community. This week, I took a look inside the dusty bookshelf to see how life is slowly returning to the once bustling storefront. It's a comeback two years in the making. The dusty bookshelf, once the site of a devastating fire, is finally getting a second chance. On March 17, 2017, a patch of hardwood stained self-combusted due to extreme heat within the store. The fire spread extremely fast, causing the buildings to sustain major structural damage and lose most of its roof. Along with these damages, hundreds of gallons of water were flushed into the basement of the building to fight the flames, causing hundreds of rare books to be destroyed. By the time the flames were put out, they had caused over $670,000 in damages to the store. Fortunately, due to the store being closed for renovations, no one was hurt in the fire. While the owner of the store did attempt multiple times to begin the process to rebuild the store, many residents feared that the historical building had closed its doors forever. That was until February 26, when the store announced on their official Facebook page that the managers and owners of the store officially had the keys and would begin the difficult process to rebuild the store. As difficult as that process may have been, though, the reopening date has already been announced, and it is scheduled for Saturday, April 27th. The store also has announced several volunteer days, two of the largest of which will be a public bookshelf building workshop held in the store on April 6th and 7th, and a stock the shelf event on April 13th. As residents and employees alike await the store's reopening, one thing is clear, the Dusty's bookshelf is here to stay. For more information on the Dusty Bookshelf's reopening and a look at their community cal calendar, visit Facebook page. Not only did I get a go in the bu bookstore, see how the rebuilding process is going, I took two past and future anim ma managers on to the, the Dusty Bookshelf on a donut run and got some first-hand knowledge on what the store has planned for the future. Welcome to the 
the third official episode of Donut Run with me today. Uh, actually, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves like I just mentioned, so if you guys want to go ahead and do that. I'm Sarah Wilson. I'm the manager of the Dusty Bookshelf. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm Brittany Ramsey. I am the former assistant manager of the Dusty Bookshelf. So what was it like when you finally found out that you got those keys oh and my this gosh. is coming back? Um, <laughs> lots of cheers. <laughs> yeah. Happy cheers. Um, it was it was exciting. So it was a good day. Well, we got text messages saying, <laughs> right. oh, we need meetings. So, like, yeah. we had a text message saying we had a meeting about flowers, and I had a text message saying mm-hmm. we had to have a meeting about T-shirts. And so we're told to, like, meet here at Varsity, and we're like, okay, super busy right now. Uh, and so Sarah got the text first, and mm-hmm. so they got you, and you can tell that if you oh, want sure. to. But <laughs> um, so, obviously, you have to walk by the Dusty Bookshelf yeah. building to get to Varsity from mm-hmm. Acme Gift. Yeah. And so I was walking on my way, and all of a sudden, our boss, Diane, uh, busts out of the dusty front door and grabs me and pulls me inside. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, like, burst into tears and was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> because we, I had no idea. I had no idea we had the keys at that point. Mm-hmm. And so that was my first introduction. And then yeah, we were then like, well, that was fun. We have to do mm-hmm. it to Brittany. <laughs> so then we, like, felt like we were abducted, <laughs> pulled in. You know, it was, like, this loud explosion of the door and then, like, being pulled in. And then it's like wait, I'm inside. Yeah. We haven't been inside in two years. Right. <laughs> and then it was like the realization that, oh, if we're inside, we have keys, yeah. which yeah. means something's happening. So um, in terms of what people can kind of expect to see when it does open, is sure. it going to look similar, look different, or has there been any uh, big changes? Uh, yeah, it'll be, I think it will still feel familiar mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when former customers come in. I think it will still feel like the Dusty Bookshop. The bones yeah. will be there. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but it is going to be different, and it was going to be different when we remodeled, and now we've had to adjust that plan yeah. slightly. Yeah. Um, but there is going to be some differences. Mm-hmm. We're going to be serving some coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to be loud. <laughs> oh. well, I like well, well, no, just like, we're yeah, loud's, here. Loud's fine. We're here. Yeah. We're yes, going yes. to have, gonna have a lot more events. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys both so much for joining me. Yeah, thank um, you. I think that's all the time we're going to have left uh, for this episode of Done Run. That's all the time we have on this episode of MHK All Day. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you next time.